in Medina, in the year 11 after Hijra, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Ali, he has just passed away and the event of Saqifa has just occurred and the Shia of Ali السلام, are being forced to pledge allegiance to the new ruler. I want to know what would you do in this situation? Would you give Bayah under Taqiyah and help the Ahl al-Bayt in secret? Or would you speak out, risking your own life and potentially those of your loved ones as well? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. To be in such a situation itself is a blessing. Um, if I was in such a situation, obviously I'd want to stand against oppression, stand against ignorance, stand against what the Prophet himself has left behind. I would definitely stand by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam Imam Ali risking all that I have no doubt just because thinking about it and thinking about on the day of Ashura when we say in this day and age Ya Laita Kunna Ma'aka Fanafuza Fawzan Azima we wish we were with you on that day we would inshallah we would we would definitely um, win and to be in such a situation I mean what more blessing what more blessing can it be to be in such a, a position and choose definitely with the help definitely with the right yeah yeah a tremendous blessing it would be as well inshallah now I want you to picture that you are standing outside the house of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam. This is the house where our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ali, he used to go to that house and embrace his family with so much affection. And now I want you to picture that the enemies have arrived at the door and the threat has been made. I want you to picture that you are you witness the enemies breaking down the door and you hear the scream of Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam and you see them set fire to the house. How would you feel seeing this? What would you do in this situation? Um, what a scene. What a scene that would be. Would I run to Fatima to Zahra and save the baby Mohsin? Would I run to Imams Hassan Hussein? and protect them mentally for what is going to come up, what they're going to see soon. Would I run to Imam Ali and call him to come and help? What would I do? quite hard mm -hmm. it's it quite hard to, to picture yourself in such in such a picture and such a tragedy but I definitely definitely want to go and save the the life of baby Mohsin what, 
what sin has he caused? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now um, I want you to picture that the attack has ended and you're walking towards the house now and you see the body of Fatima to Sahra just lying on the ground and around her, her children, Al Hassan wal Hussein, Zainab and Um Kulthum, they're crying, they're trying to wake her up. How would you feel seeing such a thing? Like, do you feel you could cope with such a thing? You know, what, what would you try to do to make the situation easier for these poor children? I don't think I'd be able to make it easier. I think I'd... I definitely want to be strong. I would, yeah, I would definitely want to be strong and just mentally be there for the, for the children. Protect them, take them, embrace them, help them in any way, speak to them, distract them. But when they would then reply to me, but our mother Fatima has gone. I think I'd just break down. I... It's a difficult, it's a, it's a very difficult situation to be in. It's, it's, it's a big test as well, I believe. What would you do? You'd want to do the right thing, obviously. You want to do the right thing for Imam Ali, for Father Mr. Zahra, for the kids. Yes. Say the Zainab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is a great test indeed. Um, we like to think that we would do the right thing, but sometimes doing the right thing is difficult. It's easier said than done, and you don't know until you're put in that hot water how you will cope exactly. I want to ask you now that I want you to imagine that you are walking beside our Imam, Imam al-Zaman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance on the earth. I want you to imagine that you're walking beside him in Medina and you ask him, Yabna Rasulullah, where are we going? And he said, and he says to you, I'm going to take you to the grave of my grandmother Fatima to Sahra alayhi salam. I want you now to imagine that you're standing before her grave. This grave that no one has known where this grave has been up until now. What would you say to Fatima to Sahra in that moment if you could say anything? To be utmost honest with you, it's there's so much to say. Living in this day and age, there's so much to say. I definitely start with my salams. Peace and blessings be upon you, Zahra. The broken ribs, the broken child. I wouldn't ask for anything for myself personally. Just because that's too much to ask from Fatima to Zahra, I'd, I'd be embarrassed to ask for anything for me personally. But I would ask for guidance. Guidance to help my community. 
guidance to do whatever I can do. Maybe an answer or a sign from Father Mata Zahra. In agreeing, in giving permission, in, in, in telling me, you know, well done, I, I approve of what you're doing. Just something to keep me going, despite the obstacles. I definitely, I definitely want her to, to help me in what I'm doing. Not that I'm doing anything great, but I, I'd really want her blessings and I'd really want her to help me, truthfully help me. To help me firstly stay on the path of Imam Ali, stay on the path of Imam Al-Mahdi Allah Farajah Sharif, may Allah hasten his reappearance. But to give back as well, to do something, to take action, practical action, just because we as a community are suffering. Really suffering. To be walking beside Alan Mehdi. So much to tell him as well. Mm -hmm. That's a really beautiful account, sister, and I pray wholeheartedly that Our Lady Fatima to Sahra alayha salam is pleased with you. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us firm and steadfast on the path of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and on the Haq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten the reappearance of our Imam and bring forth goodness and justice to this sad and corrupt world. <laughs> خدا کند که بیایی خدا کند تو نور غیر نواییم خدا کند